From today, I'm starting a complete series on smartwatch programming. Throughout this series, we will be using the Crow Panel ESP32C3 1.28 inch IPS capacitive touch display. I've already made a getting started video on this display. So before watching today's video, I highly recommend watching my previous video. In that video, I talked in detail about its hardware, how to install the ESP32C3 board in the Arduino IDE, which libraries you need to install, and at the end, I also shared five examples. These examples demonstrate how to control the vibration motor and buzzer. Check if a button is pressed. Access the date and time from the RTC real-time clock calendar and read the X5 values along with gestures. In this first video, we are going to make this simple counter because I don't want to make it complicated for you. For now, your only focus should be on how to create a simple graphical user interface GUI in Square Align Studio and then generate UI files to use them in the Arduino IDE with the LVGL library. It took me two days to figure out how to use Squareline Studio and LVGL together. Anyway, after fixing all the errors, I finally made this basic template folder for myself. You can also download this template folder from my Patreon page. This will make your work a lot easier. If you open this folder, you will find the Arduino project folder. Inside this folder, you will find the Arduino.ino file. Its name should match the folder name. Along with the Arduino main file, you will also need to place these other files in the same folder. You can download these files from the ESP32 1.28 Arduino demo folder. This is the same folder we downloaded from the product's official page. Open this folder, go to the libraries folder and copy this file. Then go to your project folder and paste it. You can see I already have this file. Next, go to the factory demo folder. Open the ESP32 wash demo folder and copy these files. And paste them in your project folder as well. I already have these files. Next, create two folders. Inside this folder, we will keep the square line project files. And inside this folder, we will keep the UI files. Right now, these folders are empty. When your basic template folder is ready, then you can go ahead and open the Square Line Studio. I'm using the Square Line Studio 1.5.0. Click the Create button, select Arduino, and then click on the Arduino with TFT ESPI. On the right side, you can see the board description. TFT ESPI supports Raspberry Pi Pico, ESP32, ESP32S2, ESP32C3, ESP32S3, and STM controllers. Over here, you can write your project description. Under the project settings, you can set the project name. Let's name it my first counter project. Next, we have to select a folder where we have to save the square line project files. If you remember, we created a folder for this. So let's select that folder. Next, we have to select the display resolution. The crow panel resolution is 240 by 240. We are going to leave rotation to its default value, but if you want, you can change it. Let's also keep the offset to its default values. Next, we have to select the display shape. The one I'm using is round, so I'm going to select circle. Select the color depth as 16 bit. You can see the LVGL version 8.3.11. We will install the same version of the LVGL library in the Arduino IDE. Otherwise, it will generate an error. Next, you can select a light or dark theme as per your preference, but I'm going to proceed with the dark theme. Finally, you can enable or disable the multi-language support, but in my case, I'm going to leave it as it is. So that's all about the project settings. Finally, you can go ahead and click the Create button. By default, screen 1 will be added. On the left side, you can see screens and on the widgets tab, you can see the basic widgets, controller, visualizer, and screen. On the right side, you can see the inspector tab. When this tab is selected, we can configure the screen settings, style settings, and add events. On the history tab, we can go back in time. 
On the font tab, we can create our own custom fonts. This one is my favorite and I will explain it in upcoming videos. On the animation tab, you can create amazing eye-catching animations. Finally, on the themes tab, you can create themes. We will cover everything step by step, but in this video, we will only be using the inspector tab. Anyway, go to the file menu and click on project settings. Double check the properties. Next, under file export, select the project export route. We need to add a path to the folder we created in the basic template. Next, we have to select a path for the UI files. If you remember, we also created a folder for this. For the LVGL include path, we can simply type LVGL.h. Finally, make sure to check the flat export exports all files to one folder. Then go ahead and click the apply changes button. Now it's ready for designing. Let's go ahead and install the LVGL library in the Arduino IDE. Open the latest version of the Arduino IDE. First of all, make sure you have installed the ESP32 board and the basic libraries needed for the Crow panel display. I have already explained this in my previous video. Once you are done with that, click on the library manager and search for LVGL. Make sure to install LVGL 8.3.11. This version of the LVGL library is fully compatible with the Squareline Studio I am currently using. Now let's go back to Squareline Studio. While the inspector tab is selected, go to style settings and play with all these properties. Once styling is complete, before adding any widgets, you first need to make sure everything is working. For this, first save your project. Then go to the export menu and click on export UI files. Now, let's check the basic template folder. You can see the Squareland project files and folders. Now, let's go to the UI files folder. Great, the UI files are also generated. Let's copy all these files and paste them into the Arduino project folder. Now, let's open the Arduino file. All the files are automatically added before uploading this program. First, go to UI.C and change LV color 16 swap from 0 to 1. Otherwise, it will generate an error. Now, to upload the program, select ESP32C3Dev module. Select the correct communication port. Select the partition scheme as huge app and then click on the upload button. You can see the red border and the outline which means we have done everything correctly. Now let's go ahead and make a counter.
our GUI is complete, next we are going to add events to increment and reset the counter. I want to increment the counter when I release the button. Under action, I'm going to select call function. Next, click the add button and type the function name. Make sure to check the box next to do not export. Now, follow the same steps for the reset button. Save the project and export the UI files. Each time you generate the UI files, you will have to go to the UI files folder, copy all those files and paste them into the Arduino project folder. Now, if you go to UI even start edge, you will see the functions. If you want to check the properties of all the widgets, you can go to UI screen 1.c. In fact, you can not only check but also modify the values. And if you go to UI.h, you will find all the variables. Now, let's go to the Arduino main file and modify the code. I have already defined a variable counter of type integer. This function updates the text of an LVJ label with the current value of counter, converting the integer counter to a string format. So let's modify it. Now let's copy those two functions from UI underscore even start edge. These two functions will be called when we press the plus and reset buttons. So the code is ready. Before uploading the program, make sure to change LV color 16 swap from 0 to 1. The code has been successfully uploaded. And here is our first counter. But there is one issue, even if I slightly touch the reset button, the counter is reset. Let's change the trigger type to long pressed. Now, even if I intentionally press the reset button, the counter is not reset unless I press it for more than one second. So that's all about how to make a counter using Squareline Studio and the LVJ library. In the next tutorial, we will add a second screen and make an awesome digital watch using custom fonts. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.